Okay, let's keep this uh, comedy fest moving on a high speed. Please give it up for a good friend of mine, Mr. Richard Grip. Buddhist at all, I can tell you. I can't follow that. I really have to thank everyone in here. I think you're all amazing. The family, the friends, all here supporting them. I think you, Ash, you should get an applause. Come on, guys. Give yourself an applause. You're amazing. Family especially. I have an amazing family. In fact, coming over here today, riding with my wife, she looked over at me. She goes, honey, I you nervous? Not really. Well, you should be. You're not funny. You've got many talents, but comedy isn't one of them. I actually started, when I started telling jokes in this workshop, I called my brother, who's a comic himself. I go, brother, Michael, I want you to listen to a couple of my jokes. I'm going to give you my best. So I rattled them off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there was a long silence. I go, bro, brother, what do you think? One man show. Seriously, I could take this on the road? No, if you do it, one man will show up. <laughs> Ace in the card. Kids, dad wants to give you five bucks if you come over and listen to my routine. We already talked to mom. We need a minimum of 20 bucks. Okay, deal. It was great. They laughed, they cheered, they applause. Finally, I hit home. They actually wanted to do it again. They wanted 30 bucks. Joke inflation, apparently. My wife and I recently watched very interesting movie, Fifty Shades of Grey. We thought it was about seniors. <laughs> well, what we did find out, there's something called safe words. Well, if let's use safe words. When things get out of hand, for example, when we first started dating, Went on a ride, I ran out of gas. For years, she reminded me. Remember the first time we went out and we ran out of gas? Make sure you fill up the can, the, the gas cover, for the gas. You don't want to run out of gas. It went on and on. So we made an agreement. We would come up with a safe word. That if we do something dumb, we could use the safe word. And that word was... Now who's the dumbass? <laughs> Honey, I can't find my wallet. Oh, it's in your pants. It was going to be washed. Now who's the dumbass? <laughs> Honey, I'm looking for the keys. Where's the keys? You left them in the front door. Now who's the dumbass? <laughs> Sweetie. I can't find my sunglasses. Oh, wait a minute. I left them in the side pocket of my purse. Now who's the dumbass? Fuck you. <laughs> Apparently, you can add to your safe words. <laughs> I'm a teacher. Woo. All right, to all the teachers out there. Yay. Yeah. Isn't it great to be back in class? It, it's been amazing. I remember my first class I was back, the sun actually shined and came into the classroom. It was beautiful. It was enlightened. It was almost spiritual. And when it was all over, I started reviewing my evaluations. One question caught my interest. It was... What is the most outstanding characteristics of your instructor? One of the responses was, the way the sun shines off his head. 
I'm telling you, these student evaluations are ridiculous, and actually, I've got an amazing evaluation. This is the last evaluation of Jesus. Not what I'd expected. They say his area of specialty is carpentry, but we never built anything. I asked him to sign my accommodations form from the Disability Services Office. He spit on the ground and rubbed the dirt in my eyes. I can see now, but it was still rude. Doesn't respect students' time. A line of us had been waiting outside his office for over an hour. Finally, he showed up and said, and the last shall be first and started seeing us in reverse order, maybe late for work study. Definitely plays favorites. Calls on the same 12 guys over and over. I even heard he took them out to dinner. The instructor is a drama queen. He stopped in the middle of a lecture to announce, one of you will betray me. Right after I told him I was switching advisors. He's inaccessible. He told me he'd be in his office. I walked all the way there, and the door was off the hinge, and he was gone. A complete joke. The only reason he got the job, because his dad is important. I'm telling you, student evaluations, not very good. Not very good. during the times when we got shut down in COVID. It turns out the only ones to get go outside and walk were those that had a dog. I did not have a dog. So I called my brother, Michael. I need a dog. I figured he would know. He had three chihuahuas and seemed to know about dogs. He goes, brother, I got the perfect dog for you. He's specially bred. He's part Jack Russell Terrier in Shih Tzu. Jack shit! I'll call him Jack! He came right over with the dog. He handed me the dog. It was the cutest, loving little thing I ever saw. He's licking my face. We're bonding. This is going to be my dog. I'm looking at my brother and the dog, and I go, okay, what's wrong with the dog? What's the deal? <laughs> As well, you know, it's a typical dog stuff. Typical things male dogs do. They drink out of the toilet. They sniff butts. And he's a humper. He humps everything. <laughs> Jack! Jack! Jack, Jack, Jack off, Jack off. <laughs> I go, what am I going to do with this dog? He goes, you know, just spray it. Spray it with water. Just spray it with water. My pant legs were wet for three weeks. <laughs> well, it's been a while. I've really enjoyed my time with Jack. So I call my brother. Bro, you got another dog? Because I do, especially bread. This is a perfect dog for you. He's 50% bulldog. 50% shih tzu. 100% bullshit. I call him bull. Thank you, everybody.